Hey then folks, welcome to Boating on a Budget with me, the Tight Yorkshireman, here on our Project Narrowboat, Leander Lady. It's Tuesday morning and I've got the laptop set up and I've got my brew as well obviously. We've got a video going out on YouTube at 3 o'clock this afternoon. So my first job is just to have a quick check, make sure I've got all the title and thumbnails and things all set up correctly. So that's ready to go. Then we're going to go out there and carry on with the with the build of that back section. Got the filler that we need, got some paint. So I'll finish my brew and we'll see you out there. The weather for today and tomorrow is quite nice, but then after that it's due to change and we're going to get some rain. So not only are we doing some bits on this today that are going to make it look a little bit nicer, we're also going to get it watertight so that when that rain comes it's not going to damage anything. First off then I'm just giving where the screw heads are a quick sand over just to make sure there's no rough bits. Then we're going to mix some filler up and cover those. The filler I'm using is a car body filler. It sets really nice and strong and it's really tough so it's ideal for this kind of application. It's a two part system so you put a dollop of that to a squeeze of that, mix it together and then pour it in and let it dry. The only thing you do have to bear in mind is it has only got a certain amount of open time where you can work it before it starts going off. So the best thing to do is not mix too much at any one time. Right there. Square of the hardener. While we leave the filler to fully harden, I'm going to get set up ready with the router to ram these edges over. But there's one thing we have to do here first before we can use any electric tools. I'll show you. Our moorings aren't connected to the national grid. It were going to be really expensive to get power here. So, a few years ago, obviously before we came here, the club saved up some money and it bought a bank of solar panels which then feeds through into that shed there and converts that power into 240 volt that we can use down on our boat. But because it's all through the solar panels, we have to check, see what electric's available. Because obviously on cloudy days or when there's a few of us here, there's not really enough to go around. So generally our boats are all set up so that we are independent. This is just like an added bonus if you like. I'll nip in the shed, check we've got some electric, and then we can crack on. Yeah, there's plenty of power in the system for today, so we can crack on. I've set the router up with the bit that I want. I'm just gonna give it a little test on a scrap of wood that I've got clamped down here. Just make sure it is cutting all right and it's giving us the shape we need. Yeah, so that's perfect. Just giving us that rounded edge that we want just so that there's no sharp corners because when we do come to fiberglass it fiberglass doesn't like going round square corners plus I think it looks better to be a rounded corner than a sharp edge You will note that the holes aren't fully filled. Fully filled? Is that a phrase? Quite a deep hole, some of them. So these will now just want another skimmer filler over them before we actually start any painting. It's not an issue. We can deal with that shortly. Disaster struck, I've killed the router, 
I thought I could smell something and it sort of lost power and it's obviously no good anymore. So unfortunately I've had to spend some money. Yes, the tight Yorkshireman spent some money and I've ordered a new router from Tool Station and I just need to go and pick it up and then we can carry on. So that's the hard earned money spent. Let's open it up and have a look what it's like. Bowker, can't say as I've ever heard of them. To be honest, it was the cheapest one that Tool Station did. A router's not something I really use that often, so it's not really worth spending on a, a top brand one. Let's have a look. Definitely heavier and chunkier than the other one that I've just broke, which obviously hopefully that's a good sign that it'll last. And obviously being new, got a guarantee, hasn't it? So it should be alright. I think it says this one can either be set up with a half inch or a quarter inch collet that's basically the size of the the shaft on the bit the bits i've got are the quarter inch one so i'm guessing looking at that it's set up half inch so i'm sure in here there's going to be some bits and bobs back to the in here or am i going to have to read the instructions i don't want to read the instructions they're going to be in there aren't they A bit. Various screws. That'll be the collet where that goes into. I suppose really I had better read the instructions just to make sure I'm putting this in right. I think it'll be fairly straightforward that you just unscrew that, slip this in and tighten it all up. But I suppose it's an excuse to make a cuppa and have a read of them while I'm drinking my brew. Well, the router bit's popped out higher than it should. So it's started going in further than it should. <sighs> Only thing I can do now is put some filler in there. Some of this filler I've been using. And then redo it. Now, that's not a great start. I wonder if I'd not got it clamped up tight enough. But having read the instructions, I seem to have done everything that it said. <sighs> Well, hopefully that's not too disastrous. Put a little bit of filler in, I'll let that set and then put some more in, build it up. And then, fingers crossed, when we run the router over it in the end, you'll never even know that happened. But those warts and all these things do happen. I will have another read at the instructions just to make sure I got it set up right. Which I'm pretty sure I had. I'm wondering if I've just caught the like release mechanism and it's allowed the, the route a bit to come out. But I'll have a study and we'll get going again with it. Well, I've double checked the instructions and it looked like I'd done everything right. The only thing I can think is I just not quite tightened it up enough and the route of it had moved. So I've quickly run back over these corners and I've run down that edge there. Um, and that's just highlighted exactly where I now need to put a bit more filler. So apart from costing me a bit of time, it's not really been too bad, but just one of them things I could do without. I think then I'll mix that filler up, get that in there and then I think it's lunch time. Well, I think after a bit of time of sanding and routering and putting bits of filler here and there, we're now ready to get some paint on it. And like I said, the paint is only really a temporary solution. We will be fiberglassing over this, like obviously the rest of the boat is. But like I also said, it's due to rain in a couple of days. We're not gonna get a chance to fiberglass it before then. And obviously I don't wanna leave it open to the elements. So getting some paint on it, first of all, we use some primer and undercoat and then we'll actually put some of this blue gloss on like the rest of the boat and that'll at least keep it protected until we can get a chance to get that fiberglass out. At which point as well, when we come to do the fiberglassing, obviously if we find there's any little bits need touching up or any gaps we've not quite done right or anything, we can always rectify them before that final finish. I 
I don't think you need to watch me do this, do you? You've seen us do enough painting. A couple of coats of primer to go on, coat of top coat to go on. Then I need to obviously spin the boat round and do that side there, same as this side. So that's like another half day's work to come just doing that. It's never ending. Primer and undercoat done then. I suppose I better crack open the blue paint. Let's see how it looks with the coat of that on. So I've just picked Dawn up from work, come back, first job, turn the boat back round. How do you think it's looking? Well, it could be lovely. It is, it's coming on, isn't it? Yeah. I think, obviously, I've just got this side now to finish off now we've turned it back round. And do a bit of that this evening and finish it off tomorrow. Mm. But yeah, that's then kind of the main outside bit done, obviously. It's then doors and hatches and things to concentrate yeah. on. But it is big and boxy, but... Better now it's painted. Yeah. And the car, does it? It's kind of got the space that we want, hasn't it? Oh, God, yeah. And ultimately, that's uh, that's what we wanted, is yeah. as, as much space as possible. So, yeah, you can crack on and do some food, because I've got a right rumbly in my tumbler. Well, it's just gone in, so you might have to just wait. Oh, I'll force a brew down while I wait, then. And I'll get crack. I'll come and do a brew. Welcome to Wednesday morning, then. I've already took Dawn to work. Well, I say work, she's training this week, so it's not really work, that is it. But don't tell Dawn I said that. Today I'm going to concentrate on getting this side finished and start doing a few bits on the inside. Because obviously, as soon as I start putting filler and paint and things on there, it then obviously limits what I can be doing. So I might as well make use of my time and do a few bits inside as well. First job though, get that kettle on. Let's have a brew. As I move inside then, this is where I'm going to start getting in even more trouble with Dawn than normal. Because the next job is to cut sort of that excess fibreglass off there so I can panel and board that out. And the same this side, although I had already started doing some framing before, I'm going to alter that a bit. But to chop that fibreglass, I'm going to have to use the angle grinder, which is going to make a right mess. And as you can see, the sides are covered in dust from yesterday anyway when I were doing the routering and sanding. Dawn wasn't overly impressed, funnily enough, but I did placate her by saying, once I've done today, I'll give everything a really good tidy up and put her kitchen back to being a kitchen. Hmm, I'm never keen on tidy up time, but I'm going to have to do it, I suppose. And I can't put it off any longer. Let's get geared up and get that chopped. I was just about to gear up and then I thought, there's a wire here. If I don't move that, I'm going to end up accidentally cutting through it. And although I am going to want to rewire this ignition at some point, today's not the day. With all the mess in there, I thought best thing to do was give it 10 minutes to let the dust settle so I can over it up. So I put my time to good use and I've got the first coat of primer on this side here. But I probably can't delay it any longer. I'm going to have to get the vacuum cleaner out and go and have a tidy up. And there we go. All clean and tidy. Well, all right. It's perhaps not perfectly clean and tidy, but it's a lot better. And crucially, I've been able to get the kettle back on. And in all fairness, that has tidied it up enough. And I'm sure Donna wants to have a good fettle round herself anyway. So uh, I can now crack on with the jobs on my job list. Which the next one is more painting. First job with the paint there was on the outside. I put a coat of that blue paint on there. While that's drying so I can get a second coat on, I'm going to start putting some of this floor paint on this section in here. I'm using floor paint because it's really good hard wearing and very waterproof. 
and obviously by the time we've done with this we're never going to be able to get to it again because we're going to be putting insulation and boarding it all out so i want to make sure this is really well protected so give it a good coat of this slap it right in there right into the corners and get a good coating on it but again it's more painting and i'm not sure how much painting you need to watch me do Well that's all the painting done, outside and inside, and it's now about quarter to one and I don't really feel like I've actually done much, but I've been busy. Honest done, I have been busy. I suppose I better get tidied up, get all the paint off my hands and things, and then I think I need to have a look at this uh, little gap here. I'm finding building a boat means there's a dilemma all the time. My dilemma at the minute is, I've, I've tidied up all the paint and stuff. Well, you know what I mean, I've shoved it over there somewhere. I've had a sandwich, and then I'm coming to look at sort of doing this hatch and the framework and everything. And I just, I just can't get the right starting point, if you see what I mean. Because there's gonna have to be like a fascia board around here that's partly gonna act as the lip for the hatch, but also it's gonna kind of be the inside bit where the ceiling and things come to. So I need to get that right for both outside and inside and I'm struggling a bit to work out how it's going to be inside until I've built some of the inside but I really need to concentrate on the outside because we ain't got doors or a hatch. We have got the old hatch top that we took off not long after we actually bought the boat. It's a big metal one and it's really heavy. So as a temporary sort of solution of an evening and at night I can put that over and I can quickly knock up uh, like a couple of doors out of some plywood and that's kind of the uh, the route I think I'm going down at the minute is not concentrate on the hatch and the doors until I'm happy I've got other bits in so that I know exactly what I'm doing last thing I want to do is spend what will clearly be well I'm going to say hours but it'll be several days building all this and then finding that, oh, that needed to be like half an inch lower or something. I am waffling on, so I'm going to shut up now. As I say, I've had my sandwich, but I didn't have a brew. So I'll get a brew and see what I think from there. Well, dilemma's kind of over for a few minutes anyway, because I've decided I might as well be cutting some timber on the saw while I've got it out, because as you see, that's everything I got out, all the different bits of wood and the saws and everything. I'm gonna need some timber sort of 30 mil by 30 mil, obviously in different lengths, to kind of frame out that new section. So I could be cutting them, and obviously by the time I've done that, it's probably then gonna be time to get Dawn from work, and I'm sure she can point me in the right direction as to what the best plan of action is from there. Well, I'm glad you're back to point me in the right direction anyway. Because <laughs> as I'm sure everyone will testify, this last couple of hours I've just been my my head's been fried, I don't know whether I'm coming or going or going or come. I just, I, I'm trying to work out what, you know, I've got this reveal to do for the, the framework for the hatch and the doors, but equally I've got to panel out the wall, which has got to join up to the old wall, which has got to join up properly to the floor. Yeah. And they're all different things, and it's like, well, if I can't do that one until I've done that one, but I can't put that in until I've done that, but then I can't do that until I know how the door's going to sit, and... And it's kind of just gone round and round in circles for the last like two yeah. or three hours. Yeah. But I think it's just going to be a case of just getting some timber and cracking on with it. Isn't yeah. it? I think yeah. I'm just going to have to make a decision as to where to start and then from there just... Is that going to be right or wrong in <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. You know, hopefully if there's any bit... And it's not so much it's going to be wrong, it's just I might do some bit and then think, oh, I need to change that because it don't quite work right with that. And it's like... But instead of just getting on with it and maybe having to change it, I've kind of gone. <gasps> yeah. And then I've just had lots of cups of coffee and tea and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> tea and sympathy. But no, so hopefully, I think I'll get my head on and give it a clean run for tomorrow. Although, it, like I've already said, it is forecast rain for the next couple of days, and to do all this, I am definitely going to have to have all the saws set up yeah. because it's going to be like lots of cuts. So. We'll see when it is, might not be tomorrow, might be a couple of days now before I can really crack on with that, but hey ho. The important thing is, 
your own. And that's obviously because you're own, not because you're cooking tea. I'm going to say that's because I'm cooking tea. <laughs> oh, it looks like we're having chips as well, aren't we? Yeah. Homemade chips cooked in lard. Can't beat it. Best dinner in the world. I can feel my coronary coming on as we speak. Archery's hardening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yo, then, folks. I think we'll leave it at that. So we'll see everyone later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.